Okay, so good morning, everyone. I wanted to uh, um, try and just tidy up a little bit of what uh, I covered um, yes, on uh, Tuesday and then try and take this forward. So on Tuesday, we, we were trying to understand the translation of the term Makkah um, Bapatish. What, what exactly is the malacha of Makkah uh, Bapatish? And um, we saw a, a, a stira, Rashi, between Rashi on the Mishnah, um, on uh, Ein Gimel, and Rashi in uh, the Gemara later on in Kofbeis. So Rashi on the Mishnah says, Makkah um, Bapatish is Gemar Kol Malacha, um, the finishing of any malacha, because the, the um uman bangs on the uh, anvil, the uh, block upon which they hammer, in order to uh, straighten it out. So I, I, I don't know if Rashi means that the av is only that specific act of um, banging on the um, on the sadhan, on the anvil, or Rashi means it's the gemar of any malacha as he begins, gemar kol malacha. So that's what Rashi says on the Mishnah in Ayn Gimel Amad Aleph. Rashi in Kuf Beis on the base in Habayna, um, understandably so, because um, it's going on the context of Binyan, says that Makib Apatish is um, the example he gives is when you have hewed a rock from the mountain and it's only attached minimally to the mountain and one does the last hammer blow um, in order to uh, knock it um, off the uh, off the mountain to separate it from the mountain, and uh, Rashi there says that that's the um, that's Makibapatish, and then he says anyone who finishes any other malacha that's a tolder of Makibapatish. Now on Tuesday I, I got a little bit sort of distracted in the points I was trying to make. Um, th th there's two questions here, one of which I focused on, and the other of which we we sort I, I sort of lost sight of. One is why is Rashi altering his um, his explanation? Why does Rashi say in one place one thing and the other place the other thing? And we discussed how um, every malacha, in a sense, has two definitions. It's got the uh, the, the way the malacha happened in the Mishkan and the way the halacha is done in human activity. Um, Daniel uh, Glass, I think, then added in a, a very important point that Rashi on the Mishnah in Kuf Beis is explaining it in context because there we're clearly talking about boner type malachas. And therefore, Rashi adds in that we're talking about a, a bona scenario of Makkah Bapatish. So all that is, is well and good as a, a partial attempt to answer the contradiction in, um, in Rashi. However, the, the more profound question that remains is, which one is the Av Malacha? And how do we determine which are of us and which are told us? Now, it is true that we've seen many Malachas where there are co of us, all of which fall under one category of one Av. And the example I always give is Bishal and Ofa. Neither of them are a tolder. This isn't an Av and a tolder. Bishal and Ofa is, a, uh, um, is, is, an, is an Av and an Av. They are co of us for the Malacha. Um, what makes them co of us? Well, because in the Mishkan, the way the Malacha occurred was Bishal, the Bishal of Samamonim. And in real life, the way we do the Malacha in its most significant format is Afia, break, baking of bread. Um, over here, Rashi seems to be saying something analogous, perhaps, that in the Mishkan, maybe what took place was the uh, the hitting of the, the of the hammer against the anvil to straighten it out in the Asiyas Kedem in the Mishkan. And in life, the Av Malacha is, um, is uh, um, detaching the stone from the mountain when you are hewing the, the stone. So um, that seems to be the two types of Malachas. But now what determines the hewing of the stone as an av, as opposed to the, um, as opposed to any other Gemar Malacha, which, uh, which Rashi doesn't say is an av, I don't know, we're now in the realm of speculation. The speculation I came up with in last year is that what makes it an av is because it's a very significant activity, because we have a sidura de binyan, we have a, an order of building bin, buildings, and one way of building a building is by using stones, and you have to uh, quarry the stones from the mountain. And therefore, quarrying should be a malacha, but is not listed in the malachas. And therefore, the gemar malacha of quarrying is the final um, act of, uh, is the final malacha. So if I quarry on Shabbos until I do the final blow of detaching the stone from the quarry, I've done no malacha at all. It's not, it's not a very Shabbosdik activity. It's uvda dechol, perhaps. It's not a malacha of one of the Lamates malachas. But the final blow in which I detach the stone from the mountain, that would be the malacha of um, Makibapatish. And perhaps that's why Rashi understood it as the, the 
alter ego of the malacha, the alternative version of the malacha in terms of human activity. So just like in the Mishkan, we only see Bishal, and yet somehow we understand that Afiya, in terms of human activity, is the most important malacha, and therefore um, uh, um, it's also a ko'av. It would appear, my best guess is that Rashi is saying a similar thing here, that the form it took in the Mishkan is hammering on an anvil, but the most of important, significant expression in the malacha, in terms of human activity, is quarrying a stone from a mountain, because that's necessary for the malacha of Boina. Um, on the WhatsApp group, I pasted um, the Rambam in uh, all the Rambams about Makkah Bapatish, because I realized in the handout sheet, I hadn't done all of them, and, and it was difficult to see in context how all these Rambams lined up. Um, and I did it for two reasons. One reason I'll come to in a few moments, but the other reason I did it is because it's interesting that in the order of the Lamatas Malachas that the Rambam lists at the beginning of Perik Zion, he moves Makkah Bapatish around. In our mission, Makkah Bapatish is number 39 in the list. In um, the Rambam's list in... Uh, um, in, of the Lamatas Malachas, he puts it after the Malacha of, um, uh, he puts it after the Malacha of um, Binyan, after Sidura de Binyan. So if you look, in the Mishnah's number 38, sorry, the, the final Malacha other than Oksar, in the Ramam's list, in other words, it comes after all the construction Malachas, in the Ramam's list, he puts it after Boine, after Binyan. So uh, the, the, we list Sidura de Binyan, the order of building, um, Binyan Vestira, and then straight after that, he says, Hakar Bapatish, hitting with a hammer blow. So the Rambam seems to move it around to put it in the construction malachas, as opposed to just being a final malacha at the end of all the, um, at the end of all the uh, malachas. So that itself is, uh, is interesting. The Rambam, by the way, in his um, list of malachas, definitely adopts the human version of the malacha, as opposed to the Mishkan version of the malacha, because again, he says, Afiya, not Bishal. He says, baking, not uh, cooking. And in fact, he changes the whole form of the Mishnah. The Mishnah speaks about the person, hachorish, the plower, haboina, the building, and then the Rambam shifts it to the action, harisha, um, binia, etc., um, binyan, the activity, stira, and so on. So um, it doesn't say hamaki bapatish; he says hakar bapatish, and he shifts the order to to perhaps connect it to sidura the binyan. So th this is speculation, all of this. Um, but ultimately, what we have in Rashi is that Rashi gives two explanations of what the av, what av is, and seems to say that everything else is a tolda. And it would appear that the most reasonable way of understanding this is that um, in the Mishkan, the Av was um, hitting on the anvil, and in human activity, the equivalent important activity is uh, chatsiva, is um, hewing a stone off a mountain. That's the thing I come up with. Ten. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. Could you repeat the question out loud, please, because we're not hearing it? Right, right, okay, that's a fair point. Adam is pointing out that um, maybe the point I said is incorrect because it's true the Raman moves the order around, but he's still, even in the Mishnah, Makkah Patish follows Boina as opposed to um, just Stum being at the end. So maybe even the order of the Mishnah has that deal. Okay, I, I stand corrected. I think that's a good point. Um, that, that's maybe my deal is, is less as significant than I thought. Um, sorry, I... ADR, I think you want to ask something. Uh, yeah, maybe a few things, but uh, to yeah. begin with, uh, the, the Rashi on the Mishnah. Yes. Why can't Rashi be saying that um, a Makha Bapatish is any, that the Av is any Gemara Malacha? Because Rashi says, uh, a Makha Bapatish, who Gemara Kol Malacha? Makha Bapatish is Gemara Kol Malacha. Yeah. Now, the next bit where he's explaining a specific instance of that could just be that he's explaining why Gemara Kol Malacha is called Makabapatish. Yes. So if I only had the Rashi on the Mishnah, I would have two ways of reading it. And I would probably jump for your way of reading it rather than alternatives. There's two ways of reading Rashi. Either Rashi means um, Makabapatish, which means hitting with a hammer blow, is the end of every Malacha, because at the end of every Malacha, you smite with the hammer on the anvil to straighten it. And therefore, all Rashi means to say is explain that the Av Malacha is striking with a hammer on an anvil. That would be reading number one. Reading number two of Rashi is that Rashi is saying Makkah Bapatish means any Gemar Malacha, no matter what it is, because we find in the Mishkan, this was the particular form of Makkah Bapatish that occurred, that you hit with the anvil. Now, um, intuitively, I'd probably have gone for the second reading rather than the first reading. Though upon reflection, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why I would have judged that to be the, the easier reading. Both seem to be possible readings in the Rashi. When I saw Kuf Base, however, there Rashi seems to say that other than this case of 
um, quarrying from the mountain. Everything else is a told us. He says, told us It is a told us So given that we have two perfect new reasonable readings in Rashi and Ein Gimel, one of which is in accordance with Kufbeis and one of which it isn't, I've adopted the reading that fits in with Kufbeis and um, rather than one that is contradictory. Upon reflection, I actually also think this is the better reading. In other words, even though I, I wouldn't have assumed this to be the reading had I not seen Kufbeis, now that I've seen Kufbeis, I do think this is probably the better reading anyway in Ein Gimel. Um, and when Rashi, because Rashi, Rashi is a commentary, a commentator, um, it, it doesn't seem reasonable that on the Mishnah, which his, where his job is to explain the term Makabapatish, he would begin by making a sweeping statement that any Gemara Malacha is, is, is included in this of Malacha. His primary job is first of all to translate terms, and then maybe if he wants to make a generic uh, conceptual point that any Malacha is included in the Malacha, he's entitled to make that. So it, it, upon reflection, it seems to me that the better reading of even the Rashi and the Mishnah in Ein Gimel alone is that Rashi means to say, this is how you finish off every malacha by straightening out the anvil. And that way you resolve the contradiction with the Kofais. And it seems to me a, at least a perfectly reasonable reading in Rashi and Ein Gimel, and arguably upon reflection, even the better uh, reading. Thank you. Sorry, can I, can I carry on asking? Yes, um, to the end of this Rashi is just something we couldn't understand. The, end of Rashi in the Mishnah. Or yeah, the end of Rashi in the Mishnah. He says, yeah. uh, We yeah. just couldn't, didn't know what that was talking about. Okay, I, I'll address that in a moment because it leads on to the next point I, I want to make. But if you have other questions on what we've said already, ask them and then I'll, I'll come back to this question. Just, just one uh, practical comment uh, from, from uh, Master Wikipedia. Uh, is that if you look up smashing a hammer on an anvil, you'll find that is highly unrecommended because it will damage your anvil. Um, there, uh, wherever you look, the idea of hitting a hammer on an anvil, it, it doesn't make sense from a practical perspective. Things might have been different a thousand years ago when the anvils were a bit softer. But uh, the, the nicest reading that Hillel and I would have liked on Rashi is that Rashi is actually meaning what the Rambam says, is that he's not... He's saying that you're hitting your hammer on the material which is on the anvil in order to smooth the material. That, that would be uh, something which fits in with whatever practical research we did. I did a bit of cheating that kind of relates to that um, because I looked in the Sefer Lamatet Malachot. And so I can either shut up or I can make a comment. Um, no, no, please, please share what, what and and about. and and what the, there were a number of different uh, works in the Mishkan that it related to Makeb Patish, but one of them was that when the hammer was used to flatten gold against an anvil, after a while the base of the hammer would get slightly misshapen. Interesting. And what they would do is they would then just hammer directly on the anvil every so often to flatten the hammer. Otherwise, what would happen is if you had the slightly akum base of a base of a, a, a hammer, it would actually damage or crack or, or misshape the gold. And what I actually described, which was really weird to me in the context of what's the final melacha that you're finishing, was that it described that the person would hammer on the gold three times, uh, and then the fourth hammer blow, it would do on the anvil, and then three Gary, on the let gold. Me, let me stop you there, um, because uh, I, what you're saying is very, very important. But again, I want to contextualize it with where we're going to come on to in a minute. Okay, then I'll shut so, up. No, no, no. Your point is very, very important. Um, so so uh, two points to make, and then I'll, I'll come on to your point about the hammering every fourth one and ADI's question about what Rashi means at the end. So, so first of all, I, I can't comment on what... Um, the master craftsman Wikipedia says about the, the Matthias of it. I, I don't know anything about uh, hammering and anvils. Um, all I can say is in, in Rashi, um, there seem to be two readings. Either you're coming to straighten the anvil, which has become uh, distorted, or you're straightening the hammer, the, the, the top of the hammer, which Gary alluded to. Um, and we mentioned both these readings briefly last year. And I said, I wasn't sure when Rashi says, does he mean to smooth it as in the sudden? or to smooth it as in the um, corners. I don't think it's a reasonable reading in Rashi to say that he's saying you're smoothing the utensil or the, the material on the anvil because then the pronoun is wrong. Um, the simplest reading of the, the words of Rashi are you hit with a hammer on the anvil to smooth it. 
Now, normally we would smooth, assume a pronoun is going on the most recently mentioned object, the anvil. At a stretch, it could be going on the hammer, and then it would be in accordance with, um, with what Gary was sharing, that the hammer becomes uh, warped. Um, I don't think you can say it's going on anything else. I, I think that's a great reading in Rashi. Um, and if I, I just don't know which one he's saying I mentioned last time, I don't know which one it's going on. Um, sorry? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, 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 I can't prove anything completely. I, I don't know enough about this to, uh, to say. Um, the, the next point I want to make, which ties into ADI's point and also um, Gary's point, because Gary, don't forget, when you're looking in the Grey Book, you're looking at halachic conclusion, not necessarily Pshat and Rashi. And, and this leads to the next point, which I mentioned last year, and I want to revisit again, which is there's a significant machlokas between Rashi and the Rambam, because Rashi learns that the core malacha is the gemar and the finishing off. And Rashi, therefore, would definitely hold that anything done mid-process is not the malacha of Makkah the Patish. The Rambam seems to say the opposite. The Rambam seems to say that the essence of the malacha of Gmar, of, of Makkah Bapatish is fixing anything. And even the Chittish of perhaps our line in the Gemara is that any finishing off has an equivalent chashivas. Because let, let's remind ourselves of the words in our Gemara. Our Gemara says, Patish, anything which has a Gemara Malacha, Patish. Now, what are they coming to say when they say anything which has a Gemara Malacha is Chav Mishra Makkah Patish? So one reading of it would be that they're good for coming to say that um, the malacha is any finishing off. Normally that would be phrased with as makkah um, b'patish uh, is kol gemar malacha. The translation of b'patish is any gemar malacha. The phrase of kol midi to isbe gemar malacha, the rambam at least thinks means anything which has a gemar malacha, um, and it's like a chiddush, that all gemar malachas also are included in makkah b'patish, and perhaps you read the phrase chav mishra makkah b'patish, and saying this is a tolder of makkah b'patish. And I printed, this seems to be in accord with what he says in the Parish Mishnayis. And this is Gary, why I stopped you, because in the Parish Mishnayis, he mentions these Meraki and Bapatishim, those Meraki uh, are those who are dealing with thin gold leaf. Shemakin hakoiz kalos ma'od, they hit lots of makas, uh, because they are the There it's going on the utensil, not on the hammer. It's going, there it's going that you are hitting on the kedi. And he says, these are, um, these are, um, or Patish, and he adds in the Peshmer a few Gemara Malacha. Makibatish is anyone who's Makibatish, even in the Gemara Malacha. In other words, it's obvious that Makibatish is the smiting with the hammer blows that's on mid process. The Chiddush is that even the Gemara Malacha, which is you might think is the least significant blow, because you've basically got the utensil in front of you and you're just doing a little tweak at the end. Since that's Gemara Malacha, that's also considered um, Chashev enough. So to summarize, um, and, and this was the other point, that the, the, the next point, as I made in, in, in the share last week, but again, I, I may not spell it out clearly enough. Um, Rashi seems to say the essence of the malacha of Makkah Patish is Gemar Malacha. The Rambam seems to say that the essence of the malacha of Makkah Patish is any um, Choshev craftsman type activity. And the Chiddush is, the Chiddush of Al Gemara, is that all Gemar Malachas have enough of a Chashivas, enough of a significance, to all the significance to also count as maka bapatish, but the core of the malacha is any craftsman-like um, activity that that brings something into being in a chashuv way is also maka is is maka bapatish. And I presented another example of this, which is the Rambam who speaks about um, launching a boil or something of the sort, where you create an opening, not just what, a, a one-off uh, piercing to let the, the pus water ever drain out, but you, the doctor creates a, a opening which remains open for some amount of time in order to, uh, to let the area dry off. And the Rambam says that's also Makkah Bapatish because, um, um, because this is Melechus uh, Harofa, um, this is the, the activity of the doctor. So the Rambam seems to say that any significant ASEC, any significant uh, engagement that has either a degree of skill about it or professionalism about it, or it's an important activity because it's a type of activity that crafts people do, all of these are makibapatish. So like all malachas, makibapatish is, is achieving a significant result, like weaving a garment or baking a piece of bread. What makes this result significant though, isn't because it's such a radical change in the world, but because it's a, a, a expression of a, a activity that craftsmen or professionals do, 
actualized, concretized in the real world. And that outcome, the outcome of a professional activity, a craftsman-like activity, that is what the malacha of Makkah Patish is. And the Chiddush of the Gemara is that any Gemara malacha is also told of that because it's the completion, even though in and of in itself, it may not be so skilled or so complete. Um, so that's that's what would appear to merge in the Ramam. So, so I'll just say, um, the Grey Book, Rabbi Rubiat's work, is a fantastic and amazing encyclopedic work. You just always have to check the footnotes because he's explaining the conclusion, which he may give four examples of Makkah Mabatish, but one of the examples may be Rashi, one may be the Ramam, and the third example may be another issue that we haven't we haven't yet seen. The... Um, in theory, uh, um, certain activities, which, according to the Rambam, the question was, can we speculate, according to the Rambam, that maybe hewing the stone, even if you don't get it off the mountain, would be Makkah Patish? So we can speculate that, yes. I, I don't know what the bottom line would be, but yes, the Rambam would agree that certain sorts of mid-process activity could also be the Malach of Makkah Patish. That, that would appear to be the conclusion in the Rambam. And that's not the Chiddush, that's the, the more obvious sort of Makkah Patish. The mid-process activity is the obvious Makkah B'Patish. The end activity is, is, the, is, is the Chiddush of Aram Kamaris that's also a told of Makkah B'Patish. The, the, the Rambam seems like, it's, I mean, it's a Rambam, but it's, it's just massive Chiddush in, in what Makkah B'Patish means, because does that mean then, for example, blowing into a, a glass vessel when you're making it, which is the example he gives in source three, your Chayv Boina and Makkah B'Patish at the same time. And there's so many times only we're going to be Chayv two Malachas at exactly the same time if there's some okay. skill involved. So, so I, I want to say two points, and, and um, but I'll, I'll come to your question in a minute. But first of all, just to finish off to, to answer your other question, um, because I didn't finish this off, I think this is what the final line there from Rashi in Ein Gimel Amadalaf means that ADR asked about. Um, nami no le elo malacha. Now, um, I think this is what Rashi means. Rashi is saying that um, uh, um, Patish, I think Rashi is saying it means you're hitting the hammer against the anvil. Not, he's not going into other kalim over here. Um, either to smooth the hammer or to smooth the anvil, we, we haven't entirely clarified that. However, this is only Bigma Malacha. This is only when this is the last act of the um, of the uh, um, manufacturing process. And therefore, Rashi adds in Masli Sanam, you know, Machaiv, Eleyel, Bigma Malacha. The Mishnah only says Yachaiv, Bigma Malacha. And I was, don't misunderstand the Malacha like the Rambam did. Um, effectively, Rashi is addressing a, 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 a you know a metaphorical Rambam, an imaginary Rambam. Don't misunderstand the Malacha to think it means any mid process blow. It only means the blow which is the final one in the Malacha. And that's what I'm understanding Rashi to mean. And once you real hear that, you realize that the Rambam is. I, we all, I always ask myself when I'm saying a Chiddush, is this a Chiddush or is it merely Chodosh? Is it truly innovative? Is it merely new in the sense that it happens not to have occurred to me previously and now it does occur to us? And I'm not sure that the Ramam is a Chiddush. The Ramam may merely be Chodosh. It's not how we think of Makkah Patish because it's not what we're brought up thinking Makkah Patish. We're told, um, you know, from childhood on, every time we think about Makkah Patish, Makkah Patish means the final hammer blow. It's not what the word Makkah Patish means. Makkah Patish means a hammer blow, hitting with the, the hammer. So the Ramam uh, took that face value. Um, any actualization or expression of a craftsman-like, uh, a concretization of a craftsman-like activity would be included in the Malacha if it is Choshev enough, if it is significant enough. And I, I don't know if, if, if the Ramam would have seen that as, as innovative, innovative as we think it is. Um, after Shea last week, um, on Tuesday, Jeffrey challenged me and uh, um, it, it, he had a, a skeptical look on his face. And he said, well, is this really what the Ramam means? You know, it's very sossum in the Ramam. It's very concealed in the Ramam. And as I said, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about this question, whether 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 this, this is a good point or not, because I, I was convinced what I'm saying was correct because of the language of the Rambam and Perish Mishnayis. However, I would have liked the Rambam to be a bit more explicit in his Mishnah Torah um, to spell out this point. So we're sort of piecing together lots of fragments of Rambam to come to this conclusion. But does the Rambam actually say it in his, uh, in his Mishnah Torah or not? And it was actually Jeffrey's question that was the spur to me to realize that I had never given you the Rambams all in sequence to look at in, in context, which is why I then posted on the WhatsApp group, all the Rambams in order. And I think if we challenge your question, ADO, and we genuinely look at the Sukhya neutrally, and we don't come in with the prejudice of how Rashi has taught us to learn the Sukhya, and we just come in neutrally and say, Maka Papatish means a hammer blow. Um, I, I don't think it is Sosom in the Rambam, and I think this is a, a reasonable reading of the Rambam. Um, 
but I, I, I hear the question. I think all of us need to look with care at the Rambam and think whether we think this is this is sustainable in the language of the Rambam. Um, but I think this is, uh, it's, for now at least, it seems to me the best way of explaining the, the, Hashkaf of, the, the, the view of the Rambam in understanding the Salacha. The final point you're making, Elio, is that many malachas would, would be, be double whammy malachas. And this is something we're going to have to deal with in its own right. This is anyway a question, stomach question, to a greater or lesser degree on all the Rishonim. The, the question is bigger in the Rambam, who, who expands the definition of Makkah Batish, but we can ask this on all the Rishonim, even if you go with the narrower definition of Makkah Batish, it's the final hammer blow, but surely that, w- that would mean that many cases, the final act of weaving or the final act of writing would be the Malacha, and on our source sheet, we've printed them iri, and we'll see other Rishonim and other answers to the question, um, but maybe the answer is that you are Taka Chayv Shtayim, in many cases you'd be Chayv too, or maybe there's some other reason why you're not Chayv Shtayim, um, just just uh, to say, there are many serious Mephorosh from the Rambam that, that say exactly what you said, and say that the view of the Rambam would be that in many cases you're chayv for Makkah B'Patish alongside whichever other Malachi you're doing, and we'll have to see if there's if there's different ways of looking at it, but, but in Ochanami that would be the case. Yeah. Do you know why Makkah B'Patish is not really a I, I, I don't know. So Josh is asking, do, do we have any, um, why is Makkah Patish suddenly assumed this expanded um, uh, definition as opposed to other Malachas? My, my best guess is because it doesn't have a clearly defined outcome. So we all understand what the outcome of uh, Kosev is. Something's written, a rig or something's woven, a few or something's sewn. Makkah Patish, what's the outcome of the Makkah Patish? So this is what we're grappling with. I, I, I hit a hammer blow on, on something, uh, the utensil or the anvil or whatever it is, and, th- and therefore what? And then what? So Rashi's answer is, I've finished it, Gemar Malacha. The Rambam's answer is, I've actualized uh, a professional activity, and that's it. But they're both springing from the same basic question, which is Makkah Batish doesn't have a defined Tzitzah. Um, and again, um, I'm not going to get it to it in this year, but in the source sheets, I've printed a very, very important Yerushalmi around that, in which the Yerushalmi seems to say, that basically anything which doesn't fall into the other malachas, if it's a hush of enough outcome, will be included in the Makkah Batish. But we'll, we'll have a look at the Yerushalmi next, uh, next year, Mitzvah Shem. Sorry, Adam. Well, I would just support you, Bob, in terms of it says, it says in Yerushalmi, it's not If you compare the very similar expressions in Rashi, under two malachas, under kuf bet amad bet, where it does say gemar malachas shalot ve'etzim, and it says gemar malachas tov. Yes. So it says gemar before malachim. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I, um, Adam, Adam is pointing out that in the language of the Rambam, he just says Melechas Arofa, and in Russian Kofet, again and again, he says Gumar Melacha. In my um, photocopy of the Gemara, this word Gumar, um, every time Rashi mentions it, is, is underlined. Um, I, I, absolutely, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think it's very, the emphasis is very, very clear. Um, I'm not sitting here looking anyone in the eyes and saying I'm completely comfortable with this. Jeffrey's question rings in my ears because it's, it's a good question and Eli's question and that, is this too much for Chiddush is a good question. I, I'm simply positing that we, we are finding this difficult because of uh, prejudices, because we, we've sort of approached the Malacha with Rashi's mindset and the Ramam has a different mindset. And uh, I definitely am convinced that there's a, a significant difference here between Rashi and the Rambam. Rashi is more in the camp of expression, expression of the Malachas Oman. Rashi is more in the camp of Gamar. Whether we're still missing a nuance here and we're going too far in this Chaki or something like that, maybe, and hopefully as we carry on the Sukhi, we'll, we'll finesse this issue. But for now, I'm simply putting it out there that there's a, a significant difference between the Rishonim that we uh, we shouldn't lose uh, sight of. Um, and this is the time for today. So, uh, sorry, Martin, yeah. I was, I was just going to say very quickly, because Edward and I were discussing the difference in the order of the Malacha between the Mishnah and the Rambam. And we thought the way we're understanding it makes sense in the Mishnah that comes at the end, apart from Hotzah, which is its own separate entity, that actually it comes there at number 38 because it applies to all of the previous 37. And that makes it slightly difficult to understand why the Rambam does move the whole Bonner thing, but then bringing Makkah Patish in the middle. So you're absolutely right. And this was my point at the beginning of the year. I, I said it in an over extreme form and Adam pulled me up on that. But the point remains that. Um, in Rashi's version, we understand why it's the penultimate malacha. But it's always its own malacha, transporting. Obviously, once you finish making something, you now need to get it to where you need to get it, and therefore it's always the final malacha. But the penultimate malacha is the gemar malacha. That's how Rashi understands the order. But the Rambam changes the order, 
And in the Ramam, it's not the Gemara Malacha because the essence of Makkah Patish is not Gemara. The essence of Makkah Patish is, uh, is a, a quality of Uman professional manufacture or something like that. Um, Makkah Patish maybe should be translated to manufacturing or something like that. Uh, um, we'll look at this in more detail next week when we see them Iri as to whether that's the correct translation. But uh, yeah, I do see something significant in that. In the Ramam, it's not the penultimate Malacha. Yeah, I think that's important. Okay, Rabbi Isai, um, see you in Hashem on uh, Tuesday. And, and, and as I said, please feel free to come and learn. And uh, it'd be lovely to, uh, to, despite the new rules, have a full base of Medjish. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.